Oh well, just missed that spot of sun. <laughs> We've had about two weeks of uh, well, on and off rain right through the last two thirds of the uh, top portfolio seasons. So they're all washed out, so uh, I don't know if I can get out. To get, yeah, I'm still on jury duty, almost got on to a trial, um, but uh, I had to be dismissed because um, my my partner knew the, uh, the, the defence lawyer from her uh, past because she went to the same high school as the defence lawyer, so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and she, and she, uh, she often says um, he always defends the bad ones, and I said, well, that would be prejudice, wouldn't it? And the judge agreed, yeah, that would be prejudice. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I got got that close to getting onto a trial, <laughs> and had to dismiss myself basically because, um, as I said, my partner knew the uh, the defence lawyer, so I can't mention any names, of course, but uh, it, it was. Uh, <laughs> going to be quite an interesting case and it might make the newspapers so uh, we'll look out for the newspapers over the next few le weeks once the verdict comes out and then I'll be able to talk about it because then it's public uh, knowledge and the court records are assuming that it doesn't become sealed or something but anyway okay so that's enough of that uh, um, so you know I'm, I'm still going sort of you know but you know I assume the next. Uh, oh, um, <clears throat> one of one of the women said um, they normally have up to thirteen trials at any one time, but but it's strange at the moment they've only got t two, this week's and next week's, and um, even though they don't work on a bank holiday, uh, she it, she said she can't work out why they've only got two trials where they normally have up to thirteen trials at any one time. So uh, she doesn't know, and you know time there um it's very unusual and she doesn't know the reason anyway that's enough of that and um get on to this uh, i'm still plowing ahead um i think most of that work there was just to get us where we are today let's look at the ones over here so um yeah the, it looks like um the um ones in the charcoal it almost looks like it's a response to potash being released by the charcoal. They do say that charcoal contains a uh, lot of potash. Anyway, so I've set up a whole load of these ones here. Well, since the sunlight's not coming out yet, maybe I'll take that off. And I'm looking at this one's sort of going red, red in the center after only about four days. Liverwort seems to be pretty happy and so on and so forth. And the moss is happy, of course. Uh, there's, uh, that's all right. Uh, I'll try this one. Uh, so we'll see how they go, but um, that's only been, uh, that's one day less, so it's three days. Yeah, I'm trying the plantains because I find plantains quite hard. And then I went over to this one that's only had like uh, two days or anything. So, you know. Uh, they're just sort of getting in sort of thing. Whereas this one's only had uh, one day basically, I'm waiting for them some rain to um, thoroughly flush it through sort of thing. I run the usual flush but you know I need a thorough one. So uh, yeah oh before that I did these ones. I think this is a dead end this one here so been trying to do these things and uh, you know I've got a well I mean it can't be that dead look at that I've got a cutting there it's been sitting there uh, uh, that was the day before so that'd be like five days ago. I did that one, so uh, yeah. But this one, I took a few cuttings off there, and uh, I don't know. I think you have to do them when there's some rain around or something. So uh, we'll see if, if that uh, cutting sprouts or anything. These ones over here, very delayed, and the one with the um, coir underneath. Yeah, I mean, uh, makes me wonder. All this stuff they talk about grey zone for hay and things like that. Um, I was watching some plainly difficult um, video the other night, one of the new ones that came up, and he mentioned that uh, in one of the former Soviet, uh, Bulgaria I think it was, Bulgaria I think it is, one of the former Soviet Union, uh, they used a, um, a gamma ir irradiation uh, room or machine, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, and they started off irradiating peat. You know, you look at it. Yeah, they, they irradiated peat, and then they uh, 
and I was thinking, well, you know, what sort of organisms that are in peat that you would want to, um, that are that bad that you want to irradiate them sort of thing. I thought peat was supposed to be nearly, nearly sterile, they say. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, <laughs> oh, now the sun, now the sun decides to come out. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Now the sun decides to come out. Bugger. But, um, yeah. Anyway, so they said they're using this machine to irradiate, you know, basically peat for bales and things like that. And I was thinking, uh, uh, why would they have to irradiate it sort of thing? You know, uh, peat was supposed to be nearly sterile and there's supposed to be certain organisms that only grow in peat sort of thing. So are they really that deadly? Uh, what, what's going on here? <laughs> are, we t are we being told bullshit? You know, you, you read all this... You read all this bump from these books and papers and things like that, and they talk about you know, you know, near, near sterile soils and things like that. And then you read things today that's saying, oh, there are certain organisms that only grow in peat and things like that. And you think, mm -hmm. uh, and you see a lot of people wearing black gloves now, whether that's because they're using chemicals on their, uh, their their formulas and things like that, or they've got a lot of tattoos on their hands, and that's why they're wearing the black gloves. I don't know, but uh, the so-called black black glove. Brigades, I don't know, but it uh, seems a bit suspicious to me when, you know, they say you build up your immune system by getting your hands in the dirt sort of thing. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. So, um, yeah, a bit of sunlight out there for you. Um, have we got anything to look at? Oh, yeah. Going a bit red at the base there for that one. So, uh, it's a, a good sign. But as I, said, I think this, I think this, so what I've done here is just a very in interesting cul-de-sac, basically. Uh, uh, I, I learned something I don't need to know, I don't know, <laughs> if you put it that way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think we're making progress. If I can get this one in the sun, you might be able to see what I'm talking about with the... Let's put it back on the spot, Cullen. Can you see that now the sun's come out? It's starting to redden up with the, uh, at the base of the leaves. You, really good, really good Dianeas seem to do that. If I can get the, uh, I can't get the bloody uh, liverwort in the sun because it's too close to the centre of the, the bucket. Bugger. Okay. Anyway. I just thought I'd do that. Yeah, yeah it works well when it, when it works, but pain in the arse. Oh, I tried other things too. <laughs> other sort of chalk relations sort of thing. And yeah, I... I mean, didn't, it didn't kill the uh, liverworts, but uh, yeah, oh, it got a cutting in there, but you know, I don't think it's going to go too well. So I'm learning at a rapid rate now. As they say, uh, more, uh, less, is, less is more. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, my predictions that the jury duty whacked right in the middle of the first, uh, you know, the prey folio and the... Uh, Witty grass season, because yeah, Pofoli goes from the, uh, the, uh, the third week of May, 21st onwards for three weeks, uh, into about the 10th of June. And then uh, Witty grass goes from the second week, it's the only one that goes from the second week. So that's the second week of June for three weeks, so it goes into the, uh, the first week of uh, July, and the crossover from Ju June and July is when all the basal rosette species come out, and things like... Um, Profolia, uh, not um, uh, Peltada foliosa hookeri. Uh, it, it it comes out with its basal rosette, and it mainly exists in its basal rosette for up, up to th three months, sort of thing, before it starts putting up a short, a very short stem of two and a half to three inches max, sort of thing, uh, and, and flowering and setting seeds, sort of thing. So you know, for that time, that sort of three month window from the uh, um, going over the hump of June into July, because June is the wettest month scientifically here, uh, as has been shown by the rains we've had in the last uh, two weeks, sort of thing, some really heavy rain. Uh, you, uh, going down the creek uh, down there, you, walking down there doing my nightly walks, and you can actually hear the flow of the creek running that, that much. So, um, yeah, very interesting. So, uh, so we've had, on oh, all the mosses... Uh, Yeah, all, all the moss in the, uh, let me see, I'll take this off, as you can probably see there, the, uh, the moss is now growing in amongst the, uh, oh yes, let me take you down here, you'll love this, my neighbour's uh, 
colourful um, sour sob has come out. Used to have a few patches there. Oh yes, we have a few patches here. A few patches there. But uh, it comes out and it can be really dark. Almost black and, you know, sometimes. So what do you think of that? Maybe I should linger longer on this and it, that can become the, um, uh, the, the screenshot sort of thing. Get everyone to watch this one, eh? But yeah, it's slowly spreading. But uh, yeah, maybe just go back to the general shot here. And I think, let's see if we get a better view that way, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I quite like it because it's so dark and you can do experiments on it. Can you turn the redness into blueness or anything? Um, from what we know from our organism, uh, it's sort of red, green, and it, does it go from green to red and then into blue, or does it go from red to green to blue? Sort of thing? Because if you look at a, uh, a Saracenia flava, a really healthy Saracenia flava, it'll be yellow at the top going into green, and the rhizome will be nice and red, but around that sort of rhizome area, at the base of the green stems, it can almost go very glaucusy blue, this sort of blue sort of thing, this sort of glaucusy blue, and very waxy like this. They can, they can become quite waxy. And so that's what, see, see that? See the way it's going really red in there? But the leaves are almost bluish sort of thing. That's what I'm saying. And so that takes you back to uh, Drosa gigantea sort of thing, so. You know, the, the largest, most robust member of the, um, the uh, Sunju family, or Drosa, uh, member of the Drosa Aceti family. Uh, so yeah, so these these sort of plants are interesting to try to grow because uh, you can work out whether you can get them to go really blue, like turquoise blue, and develop that for seed piece and maybe eventually end up with a blue fly trap because whoever grows the blue fly trap is the winner basically. You win. So if you can get a, a, a Venus fly trap with blue traps, you've won. Basically, no one can deny you the prize if you get a Venus flytrap with blue traps. That's it, you know, you've won. You, you've got it over the line. You must know something about CPs that no one else knows. <laughs> okay. Yep. Anyway, that's about it for this one. I think I can't think of any much else to say. It's just, it's just a short one. Just saying we're, we're heading in a new direction now. That seems to be, weird. but it's built on the back end of this stuff. I mean, you had to go through this to realise that, um, uh, you know, go through these strange sort of things. And, you know, you're not killing the moss. And you can go to really high levels and things like that without killing anything. And uh, it takes you in a new direction. And hopefully um, one of these pots is going to become the, the, the general... Actually, oh, OK, let's go to Spot Cullen. Maybe you can't see this. As you can see, what I'm trying to get to... As I said, it's just built on the back end of this. Yeah, it's a damaged pot I found in the road, so I just sort of made use of it. There's your um, newspaper cellulose. So basically, that's what I'm trying to do. Whacking a pot of newspaper cellulose. For, simple basic formula on the top. Set and forget. Never have to worry about it again. Uh, just sit it out in the rain sort of thing during the, during the wet sort of thing. And... Uh, Come the summer, you then you might want to sit it in some water, or on some uh, floor foam blocks. Or this is um, uh, yeah, what's this called? Benetton or something? It's Hebel basically, but it, the brand name is Benetton. I think. Hang on, let's go to spot colour. I can't. I can't read this. If you can read this, it's upside down. Benetton. Hang on. Is it Benetton? You might want to turn your computer screen upside down. I think it's a, it's a block of Hebel basically, which is um, expanded, fluffed up concrete, I think it is. Uh, could be plaster, I don't know. You may have to look it up. It's been a long time since I. So you might want to sit your block of Hebel or Benetton, ben Benettonite in. Uh, <laughs> Or was it Bensonite? I don't know. In um, you might want to do that sort of thing. Plant that in a in a large. Uh, yeah, hang on. You might want to plonk it. Yeah, doing a lot of cutting up and stuff. Um, you might want to plonk it in one of these large things here, sort of thing, and yeah, put it in there. 
and maybe have two blocks of hebel in there sort of thing so you get the coolness of the water you know a big volume a big thermal reserve of cool water in the bottom and then you sit your plant pots there with a fly wire disc in the bottom sort of thing uh, rather than a, a, a small slot yeah, rather than a small uh, up to an inch sort of slot so sit your uh, pots in there sort of thing and uh, yeah nice sunlight coming out now where where was this two weeks ago you know <laughs> uh, yeah so uh, that's an idea you might want to so in summer you can have them in a nice trough of cool water but it's, the, the, the pots aren't actually sitting in the water but the water still flows up through your um, basically newspaper cellulose or um, some sort of uh, uh, wood shavings, I've tried that, that's quite good too, so you might want to try that, just wood shavings with a bit of formula on the top and go from there sort of thing, but we'll see. I'm predicting this one, this is just basic one, it's going to be the winner actually. You know, le as I said, less is more, but anyway, that's about it. I'm going to go in, going in for a nice sausage roll and a bun I think now, I think I need, I need the warmth. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've gone, we've gone below the magic 8 degrees, so you know, that's when seeds germinate, but it's also when the plants get sort of knocked back, when it goes below the magic eight degrees. Around that sort of temperature, that's when you get a lot of uh, seed germination. But then they have to battle being below the eight degrees. All the plants get, seem to get a bit knocked back. And as I said, all the, all the dew of the papers would have been washed off that initial dew that you can never get back. So the, the best time is to photograph them with the initial dew before any rain washes off. And it's, you know, it's just give and take. As I said, this rain has come right at the, the, the last two thirds of the, the top peak uh, prefolia thing. So th this year is a write off for photography, basically, you know, unless you were out there around the 21st in that week, uh, you, you would have missed it now and that dew is gone and it's never coming back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, what are the odds? Sun, Jew, and Jewy, duty, Jew, Jew, Jewy, Jew. Yeah, I mean, yeah, what are the odds, eh? Yeah, combine the two. <laughs> uh, yeah, it has, it has crossed my mind. Sun, Jew, I mean, yeah. <laughs> why, why, doesn't, what, why doesn't anyone want you to study carnivorous plants, you know? <laughs> They're almost like that, almost like that radioactive plants. Don't go near these plants, you might learn something. Something really fundamental about all plant biology. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's about it for now, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bid you goodbye until the next one, which probably won't be for another week or so, another week or so. I don't know. If, if I get a trial right at the end of the jury duty that goes on for four weeks, considering that, you know, there's nothing going on at the moment, they normally have up to 13 trials at any one time, you know, it could be all rushing thing at the end and it could extend out for another month or something I could totally miss most of, if not all the CP season this 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 year and so 2022 will be a complete write-off basically all you'll get is videos of buckets and no bloody out in the wild traipsing around tramping around in, in amongst lovely uh, glistening sun dunes, unfortunately you just have to bear with all those other videos that are on there from the past sort of thing there's some good ones out there if you pick and choose. I really need, I really need to do a when we have a really wet, soggy day. Sit down there and make it like a playlist of of the really top-notch creme dollar creme episodes. You know, watch this episode first. It's part of this series. You know, these are the best four series I've ever done, sort of thing, since my channel started in 2008, 2011, or something. You know, when it started up. You know, the first few, up to 2015, it was just crappy 780p, I think it was, or something like that, or even worse than that, well, it's 480 or something, I don't know, uh, with the old Panasonic. It wasn't until 2015 we got into uh, 1080p. Well, it's a 4K camera, but I still haven't worked out how to do 4K. Apparently, the 4K is in a completely different format to what you do with 1080p, so, you know, it's like a whole new learning curve, apparently. Oh, I've just learned, you know, it's taken me four years to get perfect color and all the other settings. And now you've learned that and you want to go to 4K, you've got to go completely new um, bit rate, whatever it is, format or something, and completely learn a whole new load of settings to do the same stuff you did before. It's just bollocks, isn't it, you know? 
And, and where's the AI to actually help you, you know, these are my settings that I've learned out in the last four years. I just want to transfer them over to 4K. Can the computer help me do that? No. <laughs> well, what the fuck? Well, what, what's the point of having programmers if they can't help you do something like that? Yeah, maybe try this one. Anyway, that's probably my rant for today. Uh, you need some little, little program that says, these are my settings that I use now, standard, you know, blah, 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 blah. I just want them transferred over 